Hey everybody, welcome back. Great to be here with you. Excited to get started on our Cabral host calls, our Ask Cabral questions of the weekend. Each and every weekend, we get to a dozen of our community's questions. This weekend will be no different. This show debuting on August 28th. Hopefully you're tuning in when this goes live that Saturday. And for all of the questions asked on today's show, if you want to follow along, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash slash 2031. The episodes keep on coming. And today's show, just for a little frame of reference, we are getting to questions that came in in the beginning of July. July 4th through, it looks like it's going to be, if I scroll down, six questions, July 7th. So um, that is when these questions are coming in. I'm sure we'll get to just shortly after that on tomorrow's show. Again, keep in mind, uh, your questions are about six weeks since or so in the queue. And it's been like that for almost the last year. So I'm pretty confident in saying that when you ask a question, at Ask Cabral, uh, you're going to get your answer within about six to eight weeks time maximum live here on the weekend shows. All right. So without further ado, we're here to answer some questions. Let's do that. The first one's from Kate. Kate says, can you talk about nail fungus? I have it on all nails in one hand only for two years and nothing has worked. I've tried antifungals and various oils and home remedies. All right. Well, so here's the thing. Um, I, two ways to work on nail fungus. Now I've gone over this many, many times. So Kate, maybe new to the show. So let's just go. Let's just make sure everybody knows about this. Head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts. And we're going to go to the search box and we're going to actually type in our keyword, which is nail fungus. So let's type that in. Once we type it in, we look at 722, 1948, 1730, 1717, 1563, 1478. We've got lots of shows on nail fungus. Whenever you see like a dozen shows, go back up to that search box and put it in quotations. Now, only things that exactly say nail fungus will show up. And so what do we see? Oh, we got that right there on episode 722. I would have answered your question on nail fungus. And why does that matter? Because the truth is this, is that if I've already answered it, which is actually the episode right here is on 618, um, then when I go to that, then you, you don't have to wait six weeks for um, your question or, or your answer, I should say. So let's just type that one more time. There we go. All right. Well, but let's give you an answer. You did write in. You took your time. You asked the right way. Let's give you that answer. So nail fungus, we need to look at it two ways. It's like skin health. You want beautiful, glowing skin. It's internal and it's external. Everybody works on all the home remedies that's external. Okay. So if it is an external issue, those home remedies will work. Borax, soak solutions, tea tree oil, apple cider vinegar, coconut oil, grapefruit seed extract or citricidal, colloidal silver. These are all things that you can try. Now, you need to use them all for one to two weeks to give them a fair shot. Um, baking soda soaks as well, like a borax soak or baking soda soak will work. You typically, then after it dries, you're using apple cider vinegar. And after that dries, you're adding some type of tea tree oil or uh, antifungal herbal to that as well. And it might even just be coconut oil. So those, those have all been proven to work and they work you know, fairly well, which is great. Uh, but, but the bigger issue is there's usually an internal issue going on. So for you, I can't recommend enough to run the uh, candida metabolic and vitamins test to see if you have yeast overgrowth inside because it, inside of your body, if you do, it can absolutely manifest itself on the outside as well. And no matter how much you do on the outside, then it will never work. It will never stick because the, the issue is internal, right? That's a really important one to look at. It's like people say, I want to improve my youthful skin. All right, great. I want to help you with that. And here are some great topicals that you can use. 
My wife discussed a lot of those in episode 2000. Uh, but if you're not getting enough protein, right? If you're a hypocaloric, if your thyroid's not run, functioning properly, if you're more catabolic, uh, if you're not taking things like zinc and vitamin C and advanced collagen support, then you're not, you don't have the building blocks. So no matter how much you do in the exterior, you're not working with essentially, well, a full deck, right? All the building blocks. So hopefully that's helpful, Kate. And again, everything that I speak about, whether it's the Candida Lab or a CBO protocol or citricidal drops or any of those things, they're at um, equi.life, E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E for your trusted source. Lorena is up next. Hello, I'm 25 years old. I'm a healthy woman. I healed myself from a wide range of health issues by following your protocol. So thank you very much for that. I'm Lorena. I'm very happy to hear that. I continue my journey with the Daily Foundation Protocol Level 3. I eat a predominantly plant-based diet with some good quality animal protein twice a week. I eat three meals a day, exercise five times a week. I usually do a 12 to 14 hour fast on a daily basis, sometimes 17 hours accidentally on the weekends when I sleep in. But I was thinking of implementing the 24 hour fast that I know you do on Mondays, that you do on Mondays yourself. Haha. <laughs> I don't want to lose more weight, but I would like to do it for health reasons. Do you think it's a bad idea given that I'm a woman and it might be taking it too far? Or do you think 24 hours once a week is fine? I wouldn't exercise on that day and would work from home relaxed. I'm a Vata body type, so don't want to take it too far with my nervous system, but really want to get those autophagy benefits. Great question. And I love this question. So first of all, you're doing amazing. Congratulations on life. Uh, that's fantastic. <clears throat> you healed yourself from all sorts of issues. So good for you. Um, here's an interesting way to look at it. On the weekends, it does, just remember, it doesn't have to be Monday. So on the weekends, you're accidentally sleeping in 17 hours because you're sleeping in. Okay. Well, Let's just roll with that. Let's just say, okay, Saturday, you're sleeping in 17 hours. Well, now we only have to go till <clears throat> another what? Uh, let's do the math here. Six hours, right? Seven, sorry, seven hours uh, for you to complete a 24-hour fast. So maybe we do your 24-hour fast on the weekend, right? So it's, it's one way to look at it is that, yes, I do mine on Mondays, but you may not need to. And you might say, well, you don't want to push it too far and lose too much weight. Totally get it. Um, just keep in mind, you can have a, a nice meal after your total time. And the truth is that uh, you won't really lose more weight if your body doesn't have to. You just reach a natural equilibrium. And you can always eat a little bit more on the other days. So it's not like, you know, it, you'll do totally fine because you can eat 600, 800 calories for a really nice meal, not overeating, but a nice meal um, to break your fast for that 24 hours. Uh, but you know, again, it's still probably half the calories you'd eat on a normal day. But if you took another 150 per day, which is not a whole lot of food extra for calories, and you spread it over the rest of the six days, uh, you'd make up those calories. So I wouldn't worry about the weight loss. I would just worry more about, um, is it too much stress in your body? But the truth is the only way that you would know that is to begin to implement it. And one day a week is really not going overboard. If you started to see lower levels of thyroid or becoming more catabolic, that's a different story. So, you know, you're on the right path. You're doing an amazing job. What can I say? Just, you've got it down. Don't exercise in that day necessarily. Um, but you can work on metaflex metabolic flexibility and that's the ability to go that day. If you can to great, to get greater autophagy based benefits. So I'm going to keep it at that. I'll let you decide. And remember I do mine three out of four Mondays a month. That means if one Monday I'm ever not feeling it, I don't do it. And you could think about doing the same. Darren's up next. Hey, Dr. Ball, I appreciate all you do for the community. You may likely receive this either during or after the Olympic Games, but I have a question with regard to the controversy surrounding two young athletes. Christine uh, Maboma, I apologize if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, and Beatrice uh, Masalingi, both 18 years old from Namib uh, Namibia, among the fastest in the world over 400 meters even at that age. However, even though both of them were born female and grew up as such, the international governing bodies are saying they must take drugs to reduce their naturally occurring testosterone if they want to compete in women's 400 meters. 
because their naturally occurring testosterone is considered too high. They must medically limit that level to less than five, uh, so I'm not going to go through all, all the details. So basically, what's going on is their hormone levels, uh, even though born female are naturally on the higher testosterone side. And this does happen. This actually happens. Uh, women don't want this to happen when they have PCOS. Uh, a lot of the women that, that I work with specifically. Now, for an athlete, the testosterone would actually be a benefit. There's no doubt about it. So um, Darren's asking, is there a way to do this naturally, like lower testosterone naturally in women? And the answer is yes. So when we work with women with PCOS, we're dealing with uh, blood sugar issues, testosterone, elevated levels of cortisol, lower levels of thyroid, and estrogen dominance. Some women are unfortunate enough to have all five. Some women, it's just one or two or whatever it might be. So we're actually uh, pretty proficient at lowering testosterone using certain herbs for women. The product that we're using right now is called Tea Quench, I believe. You'll find that over at Equi.life. Uh, actually, actually, I would just use the search bar because I don't know the exact URL. Equi.life, uh, you'll see that there's uh, Sol Palmetto, there's Pygeum, there's a few other products in there. Uh, we will also to make sure that we control blood sugar. And then uh, for women with higher levels of testosterone, we would actually look and check for a PCOS as well, uh, you know, as a potential reason for that too. And then if needed, if the adrenals are in overdrive and they're producing and are just actually the facilitator of producing more testosterone, then we would look at calming the adrenals with adaptogens such as uh, adrenal soothe and fossil serine. So hopefully it's a good place to get started. Again, I can't give you any medical advice, but certainly there are ways to do this naturally. I have never worked with a female athlete to lower her testosterone because of the position that these two women uh, were in. But I've worked with many women with PCOS to help lower uh, testosterone to a natural level. All right. So Darren, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, Kathy's up next. I'm a 65 year old female with a white circle in my middle of my back, about four inches in width and white spots under arm encompassing armpit. Looks like pigment issues, but also where I have rubbed for years when I run 25 miles a week. Could it be from rubbing or something else going on? Yeah, it's a great, that's a great question. Um, I've seen this many, many times in my practice. Typically it's not from running 25 miles a week. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. Okay. So typically it's not from the friction of running 25 miles per week. Uh, <clears throat> and the reason I say that is that usually the friction leads to a different discoloration of the skin. Sometimes just like a red rash, sometimes a darkening of the skin, not typically a lightening, a lightening of the skin. And the reason is that friction typically always creates a darker surface. So for example, uh, when I was doing one of my internships in Beijing in China, I worked with just absolutely phenomenal um, chiropractors and Chinese physiotherapists there. That's the... the unit I was in. I don't know the best way to say that. The wing, the wing of the hospital is the best way to say it. <clears throat> and they did a lot of body work. And some of that was acupuncture. A lot of that was like twina, physical body work. And um, then some of it was uh, what they called minor surgery, which wasn't really surgery. It was breaking up fascia um, using what loosely translated in English to call tiny knife. And they would break up the fascia, which is very, very painful. Uh, but um, anyway, they would use their mainly their elbows um, for a lot of this soft tissue work. And over time, their elbows would actually turn very, very dark in pigmentation from all of the constant friction. And that's just, it actually protects it, right? It's protecting that part of the skin. So it's building up, it's becoming callous and, and getting a little bit more uh, darker in terms of the pigmentation. So I don't think it's that, but again, I, I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm, I'm giving you off the cuff information based on 25 years of uh, being in this practice and seeing many people. I have two, two thoughts on this. And both of them really go to either an internal or topical yeast issue. I don't know if this is it. I really don't. But what happens is you've got 
your clothing rubbing on that area, it creates uh, sweat, and that sweat further exa- exacerbates a yeast issue that might be topical in the skin. So a lot of the same recommendations I just gave our first person, uh, Kate, would be the same for you. And it would actually be to use a little bit of an apple cider vinegar-based solution for cleaning, and then basically as a toner, I shouldn't say for cleaning, you you clean, you know, you'd clean your body how you normally would. Then you'd put on a little bit of apple cider vinegar, allow that to dry. You could dab on the apple cider vinegar in those places. Uh, And then you could use a little coconut oil or something to help uh, with a little bit of tea tree oil to kill the yeast. But you also would want to run at least the candida uh, metabolic and vitamins test. And then you might need something like the CBO protocol with citricidal. All right. All right. How many questions have we answered? One, two, three, four. All right. We're doing great. Two more is up. Two more, two more is up. All right, two more questions are up. Anonymous Anonymous says, Hi, Dr. Paul. Thank you for all you do. No one wants to ask this question for sure, but maybe I will help someone else too. In short, I seem to have, for the last couple of years, my stomach seems to have a hard time digesting. Strong gas, no pretty way to say it. Sometimes it can be after your regular culprits like broccoli or kale, but seems unnormal. Would a probiotic help or would it make it worse? I tried the health gut support, hoping it would help. And even the DNS seems to contribute. Something tells me I skipped a step, but I'm honestly feeling a little stressed, anxious about committing and getting through the CBO protocol. I just want to, I just want to feel my best. Please help all the best. All right. So, I mean, everybody asks this question anonymous, so don't feel bad at all. I mean, literally, uh, two thirds of our practice is digestion. So honestly, don't feel bad. Whether it's for autoimmune issues, skin issues, migraines, kids' health, all that, you need to look at the gut first. You just skipped a couple steps. So you don't use the healthy gut support until after you, you do the CBO protocol. I mean, you can use it whenever, it's not gonna hurt, but you, you have to get rid of first. There's only one way that this works you need to get rid of the candida overgrowth and get rid of the bacterial overgrowth. That's the only way that this works. So, um, Um, What I can tell you is this, if you want to prove it to yourself, I I definitely recommend that. I I always say, listen, we don't need to guess, just test. Run the gut, so run the candida metabolic and vitamins test, third time today has come up, and run the bacteria and parasite stool test. You will have your answers. You will literally see, it's, it's, honestly, it's not me. I don't own any of these labs. I sign off on the labs. My team signs off on the labs and we say, Hey, we're going to get you these. You have to have a doctor sign off on them. So we sign off on it, ship it to your house, simple urine test. And if you want to do the stool test for even more comprehensive, great. You do the stool test. You get your lab results back. What is the good bacteria that you have? What's the bad bacteria that you have? Is the bad bacteria overgrown? Most likely. Is candida overgrown? Most likely. But then you know for sure. And then it's going to reinforce your decision. Okay, now I have to do the CBO protocol with the citricidal. It's only 12 weeks. You start to get better within the first three weeks to six weeks maximum. You finish out the plan. Then you do the heal and seal program. All right. That's the way that it is. There's no other way. That is the way. And and believe me, it works. All right. So Haley's up next and she's at last. Hi, Dr. Ball. I've had neck pain off and on for years. What makes your neck pop and crack some days, but not others? I don't typically notice it on days when I don't hurt. Do you have any recommendations for a way to support my neck while I sleep since most of the neck pain starts overnight and notice it when I wake up? Yeah, 100%. I was just going to mention to you, most likely this is an alignment-based issue. The good news is you can fix your alignment. So let us I, I like to do things the easy way. I really do. If you're able to afford it, I recommend don't just go to see a chiropractor for an adjustment. Look for a chiropractor or a functional range conditioning specialist or National Academy of Sports Medicine personal trainer that can work on your posture and alignment. Because if you're just getting adjusted without um, stretching your SCM muscles, stretching your pectoral muscles, and then strengthening your traps and rhomboids and other muscles to pull everything in position, you're just going to keep going back and forth every day. So first, it's alignment. The second is, it's alignment while sleeping as well. 
So there's two parts to this. It's working during the day. Don't stick your neck way out towards your computer, right? Don't stick your head down towards your phone all the time. Keep, it's a plumb line. I've talked about this before in a Training Thursday show. Your ears go over your shoulders. Your shoulders go over your hips. Your hips go over your knees. Your knees go over your ankles. If you're all like, take it, have just stand normally how you typically would. Don't, don't do anything special. Have someone take a photo of you from the side and then from the back. See if there's dysfunction. See if you're swayed in your back, your head, your neck. I'm telling you, it's so important. And then this is why a quality mattress and a quality pillow will pay for themselves, you know, over and over again because you don't want to be in pain. So I can't tell you the right pillow for you, but what I can tell you is if you're sleeping on your side, your head should be in the middle of your body. It shouldn't be propped up if you're watching this video like this, or it shouldn't be leaning down like this on your bed. You want to keep your neck in alignment while sleeping as well. That will be a huge help. And again, strengthen the muscles to always keep your body and posture in alignment. And so you don't get as much of that vata-based disturbance, the cracking, the popping, et cetera. All right. Great questions today. That is our time. I appreciate you. And I'll be back tomorrow answering six more of our community's questions. Take care, everyone. 